channel this is Dom and a little impromptu game that I thought I'd treat myself to over the Christmas period um, so actually I was supposed to have a big game uh, with some mates in the cabin here um, on the Friday before Christmas um, but everyone seems to have caught Covid <laughs> and so I'm here alone but anyway enough of the sadness i'm not alone because i've got thousands of figures to play with so i thought well well let's have another game of black powder napoleonics but make it quite a small scale game the last one i played i played the full width of this 12 by 4 table um and i'm this time i'm going to split it in half i'm just going to use the 6 by 4 which is what most people have room for I'm going to modify it slightly because I think black powder you can get straight into combat very very rapidly um, so I'm going to say that the attackers have a turn they need to advance to the table um, and then uh, onto the table so that may get a bit complicated but what the hell it's my game and I'm playing solo so it's absolutely fine so we have here we have a scenario where a Württemberg force small brigade is holding this a uh, crucial village um, against um, the hordes of Russians and Prussians who are coming their way. So we have in the wood over here, the, the, will, um, the wooded hill over here, we have a small um, Württemberg uh, light skirmish group, all in skirmish formation, push forward as a sort of picket ahead of the formation. Around the village itself, the village itself has, uh, contains one unit of of line troops and they're supported by another one in column behind and out to their flank is a light uh, battalion formed up they've got a level 8 commander sitting there and attached to them um, is a unit of uh, chasseurs à cheval uh, who are out here on the on the wing just sort of keeping uh, a bit of a scouting brief so scenario wise um, the objective for the allies is to take this um, built up area if they can also drive the uh, uh, French and their allies from the table that's a, a decisive victory if the French and the Württembergers can hold this uh, built up area till the end of the game then they consider it a victory to them um, and if they can break the Prussians and Russians who are coming on then that's a decisive victory to them uh, we got out here we got some ploughed fields surrounded with some uh, some um, hedging which is all light cover uh, the fields um, won't slow f um, and no I think we're gonna say there will slow movement through the through there because uh, it's it's been muddy it's been raining a lot here so we'll say it's raining in this battlefield out here on the flank a couple of hills and a small wood uh, over there on the wing so what have we got we, apart from those Württemberger forces coming on to their rescue we have um, a rather larger brigade of uh, French troops um, so we've got uh, one two three line battalions and a um, light battalion we've got a um, light artillery battery and a level eight commander and also there is Marshal Ney who's going to be controlling this formation who's the CNC they will come on from turn two onwards um, and then they also have a small cavalry brigade that can come on from turn four onwards which is uh, some Cleveburg lancers and some more chasseurs of Chasseval and a battery of horse artillery on the other side of the table um, coming on straight away or potentially straight away is the Russian Brigade um, which has a small unit of uh, uh, Jaegers and then we have one two three four battalions of Russian infantry one of which is um, Opel Cheney so they're militia types and each of these battalions are separate so it means they can't do um, under the under the rules in the um, uh, 1812 supplement the Russians unless they're from the same battalion uh, same regiment can't do group moves so that means this lot is going to have to move separately which could create a few command difficulties for their general here who's a level 8 uh, they also have a large battery of uh, light guns um, 
but that they also will get Kurtzoff coming on at the beginning. Um, he will um, act as CNC and he is also a level eight commander. From turn two onwards, we have a Prussian brigade who can come on, which is two, uh, sorry, one regiment of musketeers, one regiment of fusiliers, two regiments of Landwehr and a medium battery. Actually, sorry, the, the Russians should be a medium battery too. Anyway, whatever. We'll come back, come down to that. And then uh, also available from turn three um, is a, no, sorry, from turn two, coming on at the same time as the Prussians, is a Russian cavalry brigade, uh, which has some dragoons, some hussars, and some Cossacks, and a light horse gun battery. Commanded also by a level 8 commander. So that's the game. As I say, coming on, the Russians and Prussians are going to need at least one movement phase to get onto the table. That's because there isn't an awful lot of space between here and here. And I want to make sure it's a little bit challenging for the Allies to accomplish their mission. So that's how we're going to play it out. Hopefully it'll be fun. Um, and um, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Okay, so first turn uh, for the uh, Russians and Prussians, well Russians at the moment because they're the only ones on. Mixed bag, uh, the Opelchany came on, got two moves, and so advanced to there. The first move was to get them on the table, second move to there. The Jaegers, um, the t small unit of Jaegers, got, actually got three with rolled snake size, um, and so they, they moved forward twice. And went into skirmish formation uh, to support the Opel Cheney. Um, but that's where it all went a little bit bad. So the um, the large battery was going to come on here. Um, so it had a nice line of shot on the on the uh, the village there, uh, but failed. So Kurtzoff uh, ordered a reroll and tried to bring um, both of these two battalions up individually. They both only got one move. So they're basically both here, <laughs> one here and one here. Uh, he then tried to bring on the battery, and again that failed. So that was that, um, and basically that's the end of uh, the Russian turn. So they've basically got two infantry battalions just hanging off the table, and the other battalion and the uh, artillery are still uh, a good move off the end of the table. However, it does give us a bit of firing. Um, so we'll see what goes on. We've got the uh, Russian Jaegers. They're going to fire at um, the uh, Württemberg um, Jaegers who are in the in the village in the um, the village in the uh, forest there. So they will because they're a small unit. They only get two shots. Uh, the, their target is in range but is in cover. Um, no, you don't get a plus for being in cover. Uh, to hit you get a plus on your saving roll so they will count as being a skirmish order which means that the the, the, the uh, Russian Jaegers need a five or a six to hit great roll one and a two so they miss the Opelchany will fire out of their column they only get one uh, shot um, which will also be on a five and they rolled a four so that's the end of uh, the Russian turn so we'll see what the Württembergers do. So, no, I tell you what they are going to do. They're going to move, try and move their um, their cavalry support up onto the hill. Um, might as well do that. It be, oh, it failed anyway. A nine is a failure. Um, they are um, marauder, so they can be away from out of range of command radius and still operate. Although clearly they can't. So we'll do a bit of firing instead. Uh, the guys in the built-up area can't fire because there's a hill right in the way. So it will only be the Jaegers. Um, I think they're going to concentrate on the Opel Cheney. So um, they're a small unit, but they are good shots, so they get a re-roll. Um, and I, yeah, they just they just get um, sorry it's sharpshooter in these rolls. So they're going to be firing at the column. Um, that will give them. Um, no, they don't get any benefit. Are they within six? Yeah, they are in six. So actually the Opel Cheney should have hit them as well. Uh, because that's within six gives you plus one on your hit. Um, 
we'll come back to that. So the 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 Jaegers firing two shots uh, will be hitting on a three. Plus they get a re-roll if they miss. They don't need it. They hit twice. Uh, so the um, Opal Cheney column have a morale of five. So they don't save either. That's two hits on them straight out the bat. That's not good. You only have a three stamina. Uh, but we'll do the Württemberger one at the same time because uh, they were hit. Their stamina is, uh, or their morale is four. Plus they get one for being in cover. So they needed threes, which they throw a five, and so they're fine. So that's the end of turn one. Um, we'll move on to turn two. Uh, before I move too far into the moves, uh, the upper chain are going to charge the Württemberger Jaegers in the woods. They can do it under initiative because they're within 12 inches. Um, so it's an automatic response. Now the Jaegers can evade because they are Jaegers or skirmishers against um, formed troops. Uh, so they just need to do their uh, evade move. And they failed. They rolled a 10. So they actually fail, and therefore they get charged. So the Op Opal Cheney charged them. Okay, this could be interesting. Opal Cheney are on two wounds, which is um, not ideal, but um, there we go. And the Jaegers moved up in uh, as an initiative move. Um, so that is that. We'll come back with the rest of the moves in a minute. Okay, so the Russian uh, cavalry brigade came on, got two moves. So it got to there, you got the Cossacks with the Hussars. Russian Hussars are weird, they have Lancer front rank. Um, some heavy dragoons behind and the battery in support. Um, obviously it hasn't unlimbered the battery because it only got, one, uh, got two moves, but uh, just moved as a brigade. Uh, over here in the middle the Prussians came on they also got two moves um, they moved as a brigade because they can so you've got the uh, the Ye uh, uh, the um, fusiliers in front uh, musketeers behind and then the two landwehr on this side and their battery out of the th out of the uh, uh, out of the fields now over here uh, the Russians had another mixed bag, uh, you saw the charge by the Opel Cheney um, and the fact the Württembergers decided they can beat them in the woods, we'll see whether that was a wise decision. Uh, the Russian Jaegers moved up, um, they couldn't get past, the uh, um, because it all happens at the same time, they couldn't get past the charging or charged um, light infantry, so um, they've they've had to sort of stop there which probably means they'll do nothing this go which is a bit frustrating uh, this this battalion suddenly got its gander up and got three moves luckily I decided to do two and then form into line because otherwise it would just smash straight into the buildings now maybe that not, might not have been a bad idea but uh, that's what they've decided to do so they formed line the other column came up in support um, you notice the big hole where the guns would have been because again uh, they failed um no actually tell her like they got one move so they're literally on the edge of the table um and then the other battalion failed um so that's where we are um so we're going to move on to some shooting i think shooting comes first um now uh, what i need to check is whether the uh Wurttemberg light infantry can fire even though they tried to evade i don't think they can i really don't think they can Right, no, so as I read it, the Jaegers, um, I mean, any responder to a charge, you can either fire or evade. And the fact they try to evade but failed, I mean, they can't then do something, excuse me, can't do something else instead. So there'll be no defensive fire there. Um, the Russian Jaegers haven't really got anything to shoot at, because uh, now that's an ongoing combat, means there's nothing they can do. Um... So I think we've just got this battalion here firing into the built-up area. Uh, they will get three shots, however they are poor shots being Russian. Um, so, but they are in close range, so they are hitting on a three. Three to hit. Uh, they got two hits, one of which is a six. So I think they have to re-roll, because they're poor shots, they have to re-roll a hit. 
Ah, still hit again. Okay. Uh, so there's a chance they could lose the hit. So they have hit. They have also disordered the defenders. So there's two hits on the defenders. It's a plus two building. They're on. So basically anything but a, a one, and they save. So they save the save, but they are disordered. So the defenders are. I'll put it there so I don't forget. Otherwise, it'll disappear in the building. And I think that's all the firing that the ver that the allies have got. Um, German Prussians have got. They're pretty much all deployed now already. So um, we have uh, the combat to come. That's what we do need to do. This could be interesting. So the hand-to-hand. -hand, uh, the Opel Cheney have five dice. Uh, the uh, Württemberg has actually still have four. So let's work out the stats. Um, the uh, Württemberg is a charging. Sorry, the uh, Opel Cheney are charging. So they go down to a three to hit. Um, yeah, so we'll do that to start with. So they get five hits hitting on threes. Well, they tried their very best. They only got two hits. Two hits. The Jaegers are defending on a four. Um, and then they get anything else, just four. They saved them both. Wow. Could they beat the Opel Cheney here? Fighting back, uh, they are four dice. However, they're on minus one because they're skirmishers. So they're hitting on fives. But they hit three times. Uh, the Opel Cheney's saving roll is a five, but they are in a column, which brings it down to a four. And they lose two casualties. Blimey. Um, so... Let's see what happens here. Can they be support? I think whatever happens, the uh, Opportunity are beaten because even they've lost by two, even if they can get these supported, um, which I'm not sure skirmishers can do anyway, they're still going to lose by one. So they're going to have to do a break test. They also are shaken now, um, which is not great. So excess casualties of one. Um, I don't count as being shaken. For, for the test however they've rolled a 12 <laughs> so they are shaken they return to uh, what is that three casualties but they stay locked in combat and the uh, Jaegers actually win that melee wow okay uh, we'll move on with the uh, French and Württemberger turn Okay, so the Württemberg turn was very quiet. Uh, it's only turn two, so they can't bring the reinforcements on till next turn. Uh, remember, they're trying to buy time, really. Uh, I did debate bringing that line forward, but I think it's probably as well it stays where it is for the moment. Um, the Jaegers are obviously locked in combat. Now, over here, however, um, I decided that the um, Chasseur's discretion was better part of Valor, so they decided to charge... Uh, uh, well they actually rolled three moves and came over that hill and charged straight into those Cossacks um, now the Cossacks had a choice they could either take take it at the char take a uh, counter charge but that would actually take them out of support range um, so they decided to take it on the nose and take it as a defensive charge so um, or st stand to receive the charge so to speak um, because they've got support supports they've got plus two supports so I don't know maybe a mistake for the chasseurs but I think they're outnumbered and they're trying to buy time for the French to come and support them so that's what they're going to try so um, that's the end of uh, Württemberger and French turn movement let's do some shooting they haven't got an awful lot they've um, two shots out of the building against this line it'll be hitting on a three because it's in close range uh, gets one hit the russians save on a four do not save so they take one wound um and then we've got melees so we'll continue with the uh, light infantry heroics they get four dice um they are hitting or they would be hitting on a four down to a five because they're skirmishers 
but they won last round so they're back to a four but they roll absolutely lousy two threes and, a, and two ones so that's nothing the Opal Cheney have five dice they're shaken uh, so they're hitting on fives they get one hit can they convert this hit the, uh, the Württembergers are saving on a four and they save it so this time it's a draw however the, uh, the Opal Cheney were in, uh, shaken when the melee started so they need to take a test oh actually let's work this through because this is quite important so it was actually a draw nil nil draw do the uh, can they be supported by the skirmishers because if they are they actually win that combat okay there it is so skirmishers cannot be supported but skirmishers can support so that unit can support the opportunity which means they win by one as a result of that which means uh, the um, Württemberger skirmishers need to do a test now The opportunity don't because under these rules I'm just to check it because each rule set is slightly differently um, they would only have to test if it was a draw but it wasn't it was a win to them because of the supports they have so uh, the Jaegers roll a four that's not good so they are broken destroyed and run from the field Opal Cheney win first blood ouch but at the cost of being shaken so uh, I guess that was fair fair dues over here however this is a bit more interesting we've got this massive cavalry uh, charge going in so Russian Cossacks uh, get five dice the Chasseurs I think they might get five dice too no, they get six dice. So the, um, let's start with the French because they're the attackers. They would standard need a four to hit, but they are charging, so they go down to a three to hit. So they've got six attempts of threes. They did pretty well, just missed with one. So five hits on the Cossacks. The Cossacks, Of a morale of five. Ouch. They saved none, so that's five losses on the Cossacks. I think they've lost the game, lost the combat. Um, fighting back, they get their five dice, but they're hitting on fours because they didn't charge. They did pretty well actually, they got three hits. Three hits. So the chasseurs are saving on fours. And they lose two. So, so the Cossacks are shaken, they have two excess, Oops. and the Chasseurs suffered two. So the result of that combat is the Russian, uh, Russians lose by three, um, however they've got two supports, so they actually only lose by one, but they still lose. So they're going to need to do a break test, uh, the Cossacks are... Um, uh, going to be suffering that at minus two. They roll a, an eight, so that brings them down to a six. So they retire one full move and become shaken. So the Cossacks uh, basically are pushed back here and they become shaken and disordered at the back of the table. They're actually just off the table. And they go back down to three casualties. So I believe because they won, the chasseurs could charge on. So they can charge on. Um, and I think that's their best chance because they're only going to get hit next turn by these uh, dragoons anyway. So they might as well carry on. Now they've gone past the flank of these. So they're no longer supported, the dragoons. 
Um, so they've got the best shot there really haven't they I think. However they are going up against heavy dragoons and they are a little bit tired out themselves. So they got six dice, work it out. Uh, they are hitting on threes. Not such a good roll this time. Missed with three, hit with three. The Russian Dragoons are saving on a four. Four, they don't save any. So they take three casualties. Ouch. So they're shaken. It's been worth it just for that in its own right. Crikey. Um, but they will fight back. The Dragoons are hitting our... They get eight dice. Wow. Six. Seven, eight. Eight dice. Uh, they will be hitting on a four. Uh, they got four hits. Five hits. Five hits. Five hits. The chasseurs are saving on a four. They suffer four losses. Uh, sorry, three losses. Is that right? Oh dear. Four losses. Oh, that's what I thought it was. I think I just knocked the dice over. I could be wrong. Sorry, but I don't like the French. Uh, so, four plays three means the chasseurs lose by one, uh, but also the dragoons get heavy cavalry one, which gives them another two, so they're up to plus three. Uh, chasseurs lose, they are shaken, and they're also three over their um, fatigue, over their, over their break test. So... Oh, they rolled a good roll, so six is retire one move and become disordered. So they escape. And do pretty well, actually. I think that was a pretty good result. So the, uh, the, Prussian, uh, sorry, the Russian Dragoons are shaken. Because they're on three casualties, because they're lousy morale test. And the... French cavalry pull back to here, just behind the hill. That's a way to buy time, eh? They're back to three casualties, but they are shaken and disordered, which is not easy for them. The Russians stay there. And that's the end of uh, French turn three. So we, uh, sorry, turn two, so we're back for turn three. Right, uh, onwards with turn three. So one thing to quickly point out, I'm um, not playing the normal broken command rules. So normally in Black Powder, if half or more of a brigade is uh, shaken or, or broken, then the whole um, brigade goes on retreat. I think it's overly harsh um, and I don't really want to play it that way so I'm just going to play fight on until they're no longer um, you know, in action. So um, yeah, so normally the uh, thinking about it logically the Russian cavalry command would actually have gone shaken, it would actually have broken under what happened here because they've lost, well they've got two shaken regiments. Um, and um, they've only got, well, the, I don't think the artillery counts, so um, that would be three cavalry and two of them were broke, were shaken, um, which I think is overly harsh. So um, actually thinking about it also, the um, Württembergers would also be, oh, not quite, they've got one, two, three, four regiments. Ah, so they would have gone too. So the game would be over, which is kind of pointless. So because the Württembergers, you remember, have lost their Jaegers and their cavalry is shaken as well. So 
you know, uh, so just for simplicity and just because I want to have a decent game, I'm going to continue uh, playing the game as we were. So Russian turn, uh, Russian Prussian turn, they are pretty much all there. We're just waiting for some of the tardy formations to come onto the table. Um, so what should we do? Let's start over this side with the cavalry. No, sorry, cavalry. Away from the cavalry, because the cavalry has been very active. So do the Prussians are supporting. I think they're going to try and soften up there before they charge in, or do they? They're almost better off charging in now. So I think what we're going to do, these fellas here are in initiative move of the um, of the building. Now they could just charge straight in in a line, but I think they want to go into a column before they do so because um, they want to get the support or they get they get a better morale save if they do. So I'm going to try and put them into column. They roll a six. Sorry, can't quite see that. Roll a six. Um, which which gives them two moves. So first move they turn into line, eh, sorry, into column, like that, and then they're going to charge. There we go, into the built-up area. They've got one loss, but the defenders are disordered, so that gives them a chance. Um, then being supported by the guys behind, so they don't need to go anywhere. Then we'll bring the Jaegers, I think, will just advance... They get a seven. So they're just going to push forward into the wood there. Then the, um, what should we do next? I think we're going to um, bring the artillery on further. They roll a six, so they finally do start moving. Remember, they're just off the table here. So the big battery's coming on. Trouble is, it's been rather blocked now by the um, by the attacking columns. So they'll move on 12 inches, and then they'll um, uh, they head at six, and they can unlimber. So a big battery of artillery, and then the remaining battalion rolls an eight, so they come on as well. There we go, and then uh, they will attempt to rally off. Uh, casualty off those fellas. They roll a seven. So the commander moves there, takes that off, then they're long, no longer shaken. That's the Russians done. What about the Prussians? Um, now French reinforcements are, are in sight in the distance, so I think we're going to just push these guys forward as fast as they can. It's a battalion order. Um, Leaving the guns behind. Rolls a seven, uh, so five, which is three moves. So we're going to lose half speed climbing over there. That's one move. Two moves, because they're going to stop by that one. And three moves over to there. So they get all the way up to there. And the artillery, I think, will try and move up to there and unlimber. Yep. Double one. And that's the Prussians all moved. Now what to do with the cavalry? The Prussians have basically swung up over the field there with the guns supporting them. Um, cavalry. Well I think the cavalry um, they can't see the French chasseurs because they're behind this hill. So I think gonna, they'll need two moves. One to come up to the top of the hill and then because you have to have sight to charge. So they're going to need two moves. So I think these Lancers are going to try, and they failed. They failed. Now I could take a re-roll, because the Commander-in-Chief hasn't done anything. Could stop over here. Uh, he might as well re-roll it. Rolls a three, even though he's a good distance away. Uh, a three is going to be fine. So they will get... Uh, let's work this out. So it's every 12, isn't it? So it's 24 inches away, so that's two. So his, he would go down to six, so he still gets three moves. Crikey, they still get three moves. So they smash into the, the chasseurs. 
the disorder, uh, the shaken chasseurs, no less. Crikey. Uh, bloody cavalry combat. Uh, now, I think that means they now, because they successfully re rolled, we can continue with the rest of the, the cavalry command. So he is going to order uh, the horse guns to move up in support and unlimber. Well, they haven't managed to unlimber, but they do move forward. So there. And then he's going to try and remove a shake, uh, a casualty off the uh, Prussian, uh, Russian dragoons, but fails. So that is that. So there we go, the end of the turn, end of their movement. Uh, we'll get on with firing. Right, let's start with some shooting. Um, we've got the Jaegers in the woods here who are going to fire at the uh, Württemberg line. Um, we're in close range, so it would be a three. Uh, it's two shots, needing a three with a reroll because they're sharp shooters. Yeah. It's one hit. Oop. Two hits on the uh, Württemberger line. It saves on a four. Doesn't save either. Oh dear. Two casualties there. Now then, um, nothing, no firing anywhere else in this side of the table. The, I guess we ought to do defensive fire for the um, column coming in. Um, it's only going to be two shots. You can only fire two out of each um, facing of the building. Built up areas. Um, close range was its closing fire, which is plus one. But it, the, the fires are disordered. Um, so we are hitting on fours then. Two hits on the column coming in, well, this could be crucial. They need to save, they're going to be saving on threes. They save one, lose one. Crucially, they are not disordered. Uh, no fire across here. Cannons haven't got anything, so I think we're just into the combat. So the Lancers versus the um, disordered and shaken, uh, disordered and shaken, aren't they? Um, chasseurs at the back there. Chasseurs are going to be easy. They're six dice. And they will be hitting on a four normally, but three because, uh, five because they are um, shaken and disordered. So we might as well roll them first while we're here. It's pretty good effort, to be fair. Uh, they got 50% which is uh, more than the odds should allow. Saving rolls for the uh, Lancers. They save two, so they lose one casualty. Put that there. Lancers fighting back, get six dice as well. Uh, they will be hitting on threes though, because they're charging and they're in good order. Uh, that is a six, okay, just checking. So one, two, three, four hits. Four hits. Um, now the, lan the lance gives them a plus one uh, against the enemy saving roll, so it means the chasseurs are saving on fives. They, they saved one, but they lost three. So the upshot of the fight is three to two. So the chasseurs lose, by, and they are in two in excess of their casualties, plus uh, they are disordered, which loses them another one. So at minus three on the test. They rolled an eight, uh, which brings them down to a five. Retires one full move to the rear. So that probably will take them off the table. Not quite. Oh uh, yeah, it was a pretty reasonable roll to be fair. They go back to the three casualties. Because um, all the excess is taken away. And these fellas here, they suffered one, didn't they? And that is that. Now they didn't destroy or break, so I don't think they can follow up. So we stay exactly where we are. Combat in the built-up area. 
we've got the Russian column smashing in against the defenders. Defenders are easy, they get two dice, they would be hitting on fours, but they're disordered, so it's fives. So they do nothing. Um, the attackers, I think, will have six dice. I'll just check that. Yeah, six dice, but they are tough fighters as well, so that means they can re-roll one miss. They are hitting on threes. Uh, they get three misses, so we'll re-roll one of those. So four hits. Now the defenders uh, are saving on anything but ones because of the building. Oh, and they take one loss. So they, that's their first actual wound. Now the upshot of that is they the Württembergers lose by two. However, uh, lose by one. Sorry. However, they have got building protection, which gives them plus two, so they're up to plus one. The Russians coming in have got support of one, so it actually transpires that that is a draw, and we will continue next round. Talk about next round, we'll be back with the French turn. Right, done the French uh, and Allied turn. Um, basically what happened was the... Um, I'll move the general on, that would help. <coughs> the French... Um, artillery were given two orders to move forward and unlimber in front of that hedge which they got at, they actually got three moves meanwhile the rest of the brigade all in column of attack was supposed to just move forward as far as it could go only got one move so basically moved up to and um, stopped by the hedge there um, so that was that with the Württembergers I decided in the end to voluntarily withdraw the um, uh, the cavalry because I think they probably should have fallen back off the table anyway and um, there was no way I'm going to be able to get the general to them to rally them so they have retired off the table and gone um, the Württemberger support line here or column that was back here has formed into line somewhat blocking the French columns but they can go through that that shouldn't matter at all obviously got an ongoing combat in the buildings and over here, uh, the Württemberger officer moved and removed one of the uh, casualties off that light battalion that was there. So um, we're on to shooting. Um, we'll might as well start with these light. Uh, this light battalion in line is going to fire at the skirmishers in the woods. Uh, they're within six inches, so that would be a three. Um, but they're in obscured target and they're in skirmish. So you only get it once, so you don't get it both ways. So it's either target is skirmisher or not clear. So um, so as I say, it would be three. Goes down to four because of um, because they're in skirmish and in cover. So fours to hit. Uh, they are sharpshooters, so they will get a reroll. They need it with that roll. Just the one hit. That's all they got. The Jaegers save on a four, uh, which they save. So no effect at all. Wurttembergers aren't doing their stuff today, that's for sure. Uh, this line here can fire at the guys in the built-up air in the uh, woods there. I think I'm only going to allow them two of their three dice because they're blocked by the building there. So two dice, uh, they will also get cover. So fives to hit. Two sixes, however. Um, that's double hit on this column here. It's saving... Saved one, lost one. But it is disordered. Hmm. Okay, and the artillery have unlimbered. Uh, they only did one move. Um, not that really matters in these rules. Might as well fire at the land weir that are right in front of them. Just over the foot. So I think there'll be two dice. We'll be hitting on a four... Uh, cover fives. One hit. The column um, is being hit a medium range, so it's minus two off its saving roll. So it would be a uh, five. Uh, sorry, it would be a three because the attack column goes up to a five. Does save it, however. So no effect. The artillery bounces off the uh, iron hard chest of the uh, landwehr. Um, so that's the end of the French firing. Uh, we'll continue the fight in the building. So the Württembergers in there, it was a flat draw in the end. Um, Württembergers are disordered. 
So might as well, they're, they're two dice hitting on fives. They hit twice, okay. The column defends uh, on a three, loses one. So one down on the uh, Russians. Russians fighting back, get six dice. Um, they were, they, it was a draw last time, so they're hitting on fours. They do get tough fighter, oh, blimey, that was a good roll. Um, they ended up with four hits, I thought it was better than it was. Four hits in the end, um, which is a little more than the odds. The guys in the building are saving. They lose two. Wow. These Württembergers are not up for the fight today, so that puts them on three losses. So this upshot of the combat was two to one. The built-up area gives it 1-1, one, one, so um, it's one up to the Württembergers, but the Russians supported, so it's another flat draw. However, the Württembergers are shaken as a result of that combat, which is not great for them. So disordered and shaken. Now, they didn't lose the combat. Oh, no, they, they are shaken in a drawn combat, so they do need to take a test. They rolled a four. Really, really not performing tonight. So that is, uh, that's broken. They have gone. So the Wurttemberger infantry are removed from the buildings. Well, I wasn't expecting it to fall that quickly. Every time I've done uh, built-up area fighting, it's been a pr long, prolonged fight. But this Prussian, that Russian column went straight in, smashed in, and um, has removed the Wurttemberger defenders. Um... To be fair, as much as anything else, because of the poor dicing of the Wurttembergers on their saving roll, they need anything but a one, and they rolled two ones. Okay, so that's the end of French turn three. Um, it's a good thing their reinforcements came on, because uh, it doesn't look good for them. So the situation, as you can see, is the building is empty. Uh, because they didn't win in the first round, I don't think the Russians can follow up. However, it's their turn anyway, so they can move in next turn. You've got the uh, the line infantry here, or light infantry in line against the Jaegers. You've got the other Württemberger column there, or, and then all the French coming on along here. So it looks quite formidable, but then you look over here, there's nothing to stop the Russian cavalry at all, apart from their uh, morale. And then the Prussians have come forward in force, and the Russians look like they're about to take the built-up area. So, um, yeah could be over very rapidly indeed. We're back with um, Prus uh, Prussian and Russian turn five. Uh, sorry, four even. Well, that was an absolute disastrous um, Prussian and Russian turn there. Um, let's start with what actually worked. So first of all, rather than moving, they could have moved this battalion in um, into the built-up area under initiative, but because it's taken two losses, I wanted to move the fresh battalion, which was further back, uh, here, forward. Um, so I ordered that to happen. It's only one move, but it managed to fail. Um, so we had to use the CNC reroll, which did actually go off, so it moved in, so fantastic. And the other battalion that was back here moved up to the left, um, but then everything else failed. Um, we tried to um, move, the, lumber up the guns and move them forward slightly. I'm not sure where I was going to put them, but they failed to move. Which meant I couldn't remove any losses there and couldn't bring them forward. And I couldn't remove any losses there either. So that was that. So the Russians, well, I suppose on the positive, at least they managed to occupy the uh, built-up area, which is the objective after all. Um, the Prussians didn't do much better. Um, I attempted to move the land we're out and form line in front there. Um, and they failed. And because we'd used the CNC reroll, there's no other reroll possible. So that was the end of the uh, uh, Prussian turn. And then, just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, over here on this wing, the cavalry um, first move was to move the can cannons forward and unlimber them sort of that way, um, and it failed, which meant everything else stopped moving over here. So the cavalry just sat here, wondering what to do next which is a, a blessed relief, I think, for the French. But um, So we're on to shooting. That's all we can do. Uh, there's no combat this turn. So we might as well start with these cannons here that have unlimbered. Uh, they, I think the only viable target is the 
uh, French artillery, so it's medium range, two shots. However, they are in skirmish, um, so it's going to be fives to hit. And missed with both shots. Um, the muskets here, yeah, both these columns will fire at that one there because they're the closest target. They only get one dice, um, and they will be hitting on uh, fives. No, nope, they're fives, they're fours, uh, they're sixes, sorry. So we'll start with them, sixes, missed, these are fives, they hit. Uh, they're sixes because they're, sh they're disordered. Uh, save and roll for the French column, um, they've got cover and also um, they're in a column. So they're fine, they pass. The disorder comes off this column here, because they didn't move this go. Um, what else? The Russian uh, battalion that's now in here will fire into the Württemberg line. A bit closer, you can see what's going on. So firing out of that, facing into there, they get two shots. Uh, they will be hitting on threes because it's within um, short range. They hit twice. Württembergers to save. Save one, lose one. Um, and I guess they could fire the other dice out this side because um, they've got three dice so they can fire the other dice out of that side into that line that's on the other side so again that's going to be threes they hit the Württembergers save so that's fine then we've got the Jaegers firing down there um, they are uh, a small unit so it's only two dice but they are hitting on three because it's short range um, but then they will get a re-roll as well because they're sharpshooters. They hit with a six, which is a disorder, but just one hit. Um, save and roll for the Württembergers. They save it, but they are disordered. So that was a rather quick turn four for the uh, Allies. So on to the French. Right. French turn four was very dramatic. Um, we started over here with the Württembergers. This line that was here formed up into column and charged into the built-up area. Um, it was a risky move. I could have done it in line, but I wanted the extra saving for, throw for being in attack column, which is why we did it. Um, the, there was nothing else for the Württembergers to do because that's all they've got left is two battalions. That's all they've got left out of that formation. So that command would definitely be broken now. Um, over here, the French, um, I ordered them to basically move forward up to the line of that hedge line to basically to provide support to the Württembergers, but also to counteract the mass columns of Prussians coming the other way. Uh, they actually got three moves. They only needed two to get that far, so that is that. Um, the uh, but out here on the wing was even more dramatic so uh, the French cavalry light cavalry arrived um, sorry that tree is right in the way isn't it move it there French light cavalry arrived um, and immediately charged the Prussian uh, sorry Russian uh, hussars that were on the on the hill there who counter charged um, against the Lancers. So we got the Cleveberg Lancers against the Russian Lancers. We'll see what happens. Uh, the French should have the advantage because they are supported by the Chasseurs, whereas the Russians are not supported at all. Also the French Horse Artillery move forward two moves, well move, one move and then unlimbered. So they're sitting right there to, to fire at uh, the Prussian uh, Artillery. So interesting turn we'll see where the French can turn it around they need to uh, they lost the built lost the built-up area much easier than I was expecting so we'll move on to some shooting first of all we've got the Württemberger line firing at close range into the Jaegers uh, they will but they are disordered so would be fours goes to fives they get two hits one of which is a disorder the Württemberg uh, sorry the um, Russians save one of them, but they do take another loss, or first loss as they have. Uh, we'll take the disorder off the Württembergers now, they're not doing anything else. 
Um, into the built-up area, the Russians um, get to fire defensively at the column coming in. Uh, two shots, because that's all they can fa fire out of facing, hitting on threes. They hit once. Uh, the, co uh, the Württemberg column saves on a three. Saves it. So no effect. Um, bum, 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 bum. That is everything there. This column, French column here. I suppose they can fire at them. They can fire at them. So two dice. One from each of them. Uh, it looks like it's close range. Yeah, it is. Um, so they'd be hitting on threes, but not clear target. Uh, we have to dice it separately because they've got a clear target, but they haven't. So that'll be threes down to fours because it's not clear and missed. And the other unit uh, will be hitting on um, threes. They do hit. Saving roll for the Prussians. Roll to six, so they're fine. No effect. The French artillery, again, will fire at the land we're there. Uh, two shots. Uh, they do get cover, but you are firing at artillery firing at the column. I forgot to do that last time. Uh, it's, oh, that's on their save. Okay. That's on the save. Ah, but artillery shooting at a column is plus one. So it would be fours to hit, which then would go to three because they're firing at a column, but then goes back to four because uh, of cover. Uh, gets one hit. The Prussian column um, saves on a, th a four, I think. Rolls a six, so actually fine. No problem at all. Over here, the uh, French horse artillery has unlimbered within 12 inches of the uh, of the Russian horse artillery. Now, the Russians don't count as in skirmish order because um, they haven't deployed yet. So, so I think it goes down to it's three dice because it's close range, and they are hitting on a straight up four, I believe. Oh, that was a shame. Only the one hit. Save and roll for the Russians is not taken. So they lose a casualty. Could have been an awful lot worse for them there. And then we're on to hand to hand. So let's do the uh, cavalry charge first since I'm over this way. Okay, so the uh, Cleveberg gets seven dice. Um, so they are more effective lancers than the Russian lancers because the Russians actually only had, uh, these are Hussars, and they only had Lancers in the first rank apparently. So, the Württembergers, not Württembergers, the Klevebergs are uh, seven dice, they are hitting on a three because they charged. They charged. Four hits. The Russians uh, will save, or should be saving on four, but they'll lose one because of the lance. So it's three, uh, fives. Well, they tried. They actually only lost two men in the end, which is pretty good. The Russians fight back. They've got six dice instead of the seven. Uh, two, four, six. They will also, however, be hitting on threes. So they hit with four. Again, the Cleves uh, lose one off their saving roll for the Lance. They save, t save one, so they lose three. So, oops, I'm dropping the, dropping the dice. So three plays two was the upshot of the result. Um, however, the Clevebergs get a support, so that would make it even. Can artillery support? So I always forget how that works. So basically the artillery uh, can't be supported themselves, but they can support. So therefore they, the Clevebergs get two supports, artillery to their flank, uh, cavalry to their rear, which means they end up winning the combat by one, which means <coughs> even though they're shaken, they don't need to do a test 
because you only test if you drew a combat um, and it will be a brake test straight up brake test actually um, no actually think about it because the both sides are now shaken so will the Russians count as shaken for this turn I think they do don't they so the Russians are shaken as well both cavalry shake each other in the in the charge is the upshot of that the Russians however lost because of lack of support um, so they will do a brake test but it is a straight up brake test I think because they uh, they only suffer for disordered and they're not disordered so straight roll they rolled a four they rolled a four and that is them off the table gone Kaputski. Now normally the Lancers, the, uh, the uh, Cleve Bergs would be able to pursue and probably charge into the uh, the Russian horse guns over there but because they are shaken they can't continue and therefore that's the end of it, the end of that. So at the end of the turn the uh, Cavalry of just sort of cancelling each other out, which I guess is good for the French. I don't really know, to be honest. One side would like to get superiority, but at the moment the situation is the Russians, both their remaining cavalry units are shaken. The French, uh, well, the Clevebergs are shaken, but they've got a chasseur unit here which is perfectly intact. So we'll move on to the combat in the built-up area. Uh, the Russians uh, defending get two dice. Um, they are hitting on a four. They will get oh, double one, but they will get a re-roll because they're tough fighters. Still roll a two, so that's nothing at all. Um, and the French, go or the Wurttembergers going in get two, four, six dice, needing threes. Uh, they got four hits. Uh, save and roll for the Russians. They lose two. So, oh my goodness. Nobody can hold this built up area. So they lose two casualties. It's a good thing we didn't put the other unit forward. So two casualties. Um, they, uh, however, they count they cancel those out in terms of the result so it is a flat up draw and Russian infantry have a stamina 4 so they're still a little way off being worn out so that's pretty good so the upshot was oh actually no thinking about it it was two difference in combat they get two for the building so that's zero however the French get support so they've got f support there and support there so they're actually the French are deemed to have won that combat. So next round they get a, an advantage in the hand-to-hand, -hand, but the Russians are holding on. And that's the end of turn four. Back with turn five. Okay, a rather more successful turn this time for the Russians and Prussians. Uh, first up on, uh, sorry, the camera's wonky. Uh, the artillery here withdrew slightly to form up with their uh, Prussian compatriots and unlimbered. Uh, which was good, and the cavalry commander moved back and took a, a wound off the Russian uh, dragoons, so they're no longer shaken. Um, over here, well, I did think about subtlety, and then I thought these are Prussians, uh, Prussians and Russians. So um, basically, this was a massive charge, straightforward under initiative. They all went massing straight into the. Uh, French there, so we're going to have a big battle. Uh, two big columns fighting each other. Um, then nothing much else really happened over here. Um, the uh, I did debate what to do with the Russians. Um, in the end, I thought I was thinking about charging this column into the uh, Württemberger lights. Um, but I thought they needed some support, so instead I took an initiative, uh, took a casualty off this column at the back here, um, and that was all the Russians did. So we'll move on to shooting uh, first of all. Um, let's start with the uh, Russian Jaegers in the woods here. We'll fire at those Württembergers. They are disordered, however, it is close range, so it's forced to hit. 
They also get a re-roll because they're sharpshooters. So one hit on the Württembergers, which they failed to save. So they're up to two casualties now. Um, the We'll come back to the melee. The cannons here have been particularly pointless, really. So I don't... They could fire at the support there, I think. Yeah. It's 24 inches. They wouldn't... It's normally a big battery. Well, it is a, grand, a large battery. Um, so I'm going to only give them two of them to fire. Uh, because definitely this one's blocked. Uh, and they'll say it's an obscured shot. However, they are firing at a column... Um, so they would be hitting on a four, uh, obscured is five, back up to four because uh, they're firing a column. They get a disordering hit. Does this column save it? Uh, no, it doesn't. Now let me think this through. So it would be a four. Uh, column gives them a far, uh, gives it to a three, but artillery puts it back to a four. So no, they did save it, but they are disordered. <coughs> so that French column is disordered. The what should we do here? The French column is being charged, so it can fire one shot at the incoming uh, Prussians. They need a four down to a three because it's closing fire. They rolled a six. That's quite big. It's saved, but it does mean the Prussians are disordered as they charge in the artillery can fire at this oh no we're doing the other way around aren't we so the the land we can't fire because they're charging in support so we'll come back to the artilleries here so we've got a grand battery formed up all of a sudden uh, we've got the prussian guns I think they're going to fight. They they can ignore those because they're light because they're in skirmish effectively deployed. They haven't got any other targets, so they're going to fire at the uh, Cleveburg cavalry. Medium range, so two shots um, hitting on a four. Oof, that's one hit. Disorders them as well. They're saving. Three is not saved. So that will be a break test for them. Yep, so they're shaken and disordered, and they're won over. So that will definitely be a break test for them. The Russian horse guns will have to fire at the, uh, their opposition there because they can't really see around the hill. It's only going to be one dice, I think, for that, because they're light guns. Uh, we'll be hitting on a five. They missed. Um, we might as well do the uh, cavalry, uh, we'll do the Cleveburg cavalry break test because before we move on. Um, so they're one over and they're shaken, so it's minus two off their roll. So they're pushing them down to a five, which I think is retire. So they have been retired off the table. Moment of glory was short lived and they've gone. This cavalry fight has been uh, this cavalry fight has been a very brutal affair. Um, so basically, the French now only have the chasseurs left. The Russians have a, a bit of an advantage because they've got, admittedly, a damaged dragoon unit, but it is a dragoon unit, um, and the Cossacks, who at some point might be recovered. So heavy cavalry against light cavalry. Who's your money on? I know where mine is. I don't know the way the dice have been going. Right, let's do the combats here. So we've got the two columns smashing each other. Russian, uh, Prussians have a slight advantage because um, they charged, but then they've lost that because they are disordered. They were disordered by the shot from the French column. So they will get six dice, um, hitting on a three, back to a four because of disorder. They did pretty well, actually. Blimey, they did very well. Um, four sixes and two twos. So four hits. French saving on a three. They lose two. So the French lose two. French fighting back. Also six dice. Also hitting on fours. 
they, they hit every single one. Wow. All six hits. And the Prussians save. They tried their best. Uh, they lost just two. 2v2, the op shot. So. The result of that combat means the, the Prussians are now shaken because they already had one casualty. So they're shaken and disordered. Um, they, it was a draw in the combat, two each. Now then, um, okay, so uh, the, it was two casualties apiece, which is a draw. Uh, they are both supported exactly the same. So it's a flat out draw. However, on a draw, the Prussians need to take a break test because they are shaken. They roll a seven. A seven, I think, is going to be fine for the hold your ground. So the upshot of that is, oop, it's a flat out draw. The, um, that's me. oh, that's my casualties. But the French will have an advantage because in next round, uh, the Prussians are shaken and disordered into the melee in the built-up area now the, the Württembergers uh, won last round um, somehow not quite sure but they did uh, they get six dice two four six dice um, hitting on threes because they won the melee last round uh, not so good this time only three hits three hits for the Russians to defend they are in a built up area, they save them all. The Russians fight back with two dice. Um, and they are needing, f they're needing fours, so they, they hit with both. Columns defend it. So actually the end of that combat is a 0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, the Württembergers get plus two. Um, and the Russians get plus two for the built-up area, so it's a draw this time. So, end of that round. Nobody has the advantage in the built-up area. The cavalry have worn each other out, largely. And there's a big massive melee going on in the middle. Back with French turn five? I think so. <laughs> Okay, quick turn from the uh, French side, um, mainly because everything's sort of involved. So, okay, very quick and simple turn from the French and Allied side, um, because everything's involved in combat, really. The only thing the Württemberger commander did was rally off a wound off this line, uh, a line of light troops. Um, their other battalion is obviously involved in combat. In, over here, everything's in combat, so really nothing can go on. Artillery's just going to do its stuff. The only thing there was a thought uh, around was what to do with the the, the remaining cavalry uh, regiment over here. Um, I did contemplate charging the Russian heavy cavalry um, that are back there, um, but in, the trouble is they would be unsupported, and those are heavy cavalry that would can, can now counter charge because they're no longer shaken, and therefore you're probably better waiting. For the inevitable heavy cavalry charge where at least they can get some fire from the cannons hopefully against them or or can get support from those cannons so i think it's you know we're trying to buy time now the the french cavalry is rather outnumbered uh, in quality and quantity so i think it made sense so they all they've done is pull back slightly um so that they are not in the arc of those artillery so they've um Prussian and Russian guns are going to have to fire at the uh, French horse guns. Um, otherwise, it's on to shooting, I think, next. So let's start with the uh, somewhat rejuvenated line here. We'll fire three shots at the skirmishers in the woods. The skirmishers... Uh, oh, I, shouldn't need to I shouldn't have taken that disorder off there. The skirmishers are going to be... Uh, sorry, the... The French, the, the Württemberger line will get three dice, but we're hitting on sixes, uh, sorry, we're hitting on threes because at close range, uh, but lose one because it's a skirmish target. Fours to hit. 
Wow, two sixes and a five and a four. No need for the re-roll there. So can the uh, Jaegers save that? Save that? They can only save two. Or only save one. So therefore, they're on three casualties, which means they are shaken and disordered. And we'll have to do a break test. Okay, uh, we might as well do the test for those um, Russian Jaegers. Um, they are at minus two because they're one casualty in excess and they're also disordered. Oh, I can't see the other dice. Is it gone? You need 11. Uh, so they are absolutely fine, except they're shaken and disordered. Apart from that, all good. Um, bum, 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 bum. Moving across, there's no more firing. We might as, I might as well do the combats while I'm here. Um, no, let's keep it in sequence. So they're supporting, and they've got no targets to fire at. Uh, the artillery, however, can fire at the um, landwehr that are right in front of them. Two dice uh, hitting on a... Oh, I think it's three dice actually. Maybe even four dice. What's uh, artillery? Yeah, three dice. No, actually four dice because it's close range fire. So they would be hitting on um, four normally. They lose one because of cover. So that's fives. But the firing column pushes it back to fours again. Uh, that's two hits. Column loses two for shoot, shoot uh, being hit at close range. So it saves one but loses one. Uh, moving across. Uh, French horse artillery against their uh, opposite numbers. Two dice, I think. No, one dice. Because uh, they're a light gun. Will hit on a five. No, missed. That's all the shooting, so we'll come back to combat. Uh, let's keep the built up, uh, let's keep working on the built up area. So uh, the Württembergers get six dice. It was a draw last turn, I think. Yeah, it was a draw last turn. So they're hitting on fours. They get four hits. Four hits for the defenders to save. They lose one. So they're now up to three losses. Fighting back, the uh, defenders only get two dice, hitting on fours. They hit with both. Can the columns survive? Oh, two ones. Ouch. So, hmm, could be the end of the Württembergers here. So, upshot was two to the Russians, sorry, they caused two casualties, the Württembergers only caused one, so it's one up in the favour of the Russians. They also get plus two because they're in a built up area, so they're at plus three. Uh, the Württembergers only get support of two, so they lose by one. Uh, they are also shaken, so they'll need to do a brake test. Whoops. It's just a straight break test because they are not in excess of their casualties. They rolled a nine, so they stay locked in. So it is a draw, uh, sorry, it's a win to the Russians and their opposition are shaken. Interesting. Now the Russians are on three losses, but Russian battalions in black powder, to show their toughness, um, actually get a um, uh, stamina of four. So they have a big advantage. Okay, into the big melee here, which actually is advantage to the French. The It was a draw last turn again, but the Prussians are, bro are shaken and disordered. The French uh, are okay at the moment. So they're hitting six dice, hitting on a four. Uh, they get just the two hits. Oof. Can the Prussians save them? Save one of them. So they are one over their shake, one over their excess. 
Prussians fighting back get six dice as well. Two, four, six. However, they're hitting on fives because they are shaken. They only go one. Only get one. The French can save it. It's a cock dice. No, French don't save it. So it's a draw in terms of losses, which also makes the French column shaken. So, a draw. We know it's a flat out draw because um, they've both supported to the same amount. So therefore, um, 1v1, yeah, both sides will need to do a break test because they're both shaken on a draw. The Prussians will do it at minus two, however, because they're disordered and one in excess. See what they do? They roll a three. <laughs> I think we know what happens there. They have gone. Routed. Destroyed. Kaputs. So, let's do their supports. Uh, the guys behind them. They love it. They're fine. And the land we're beside them. Uh, seven is fine for them as well, so they all stay exactly as they are, just the battalion that was fighting. The French column that was fighting, um, it's just a straight dice. It's shaken, but it's not disordered, so it's no minus, and it's on exactly the right, uh, there's no excess casualties. Rolls an eight, so that's fine. It stays where it is. So, um, just the Prussian battalion is destroyed. Otherwise... Everything continues as normal. Back for turn six, I want to say, for the Russians. And it's got rather hot all of a sudden. I, yeah, I'm not sure how this is going to go. Could go either way. Okay, over to the Russian-Prussian turn. <coughs> On the cavalry wing, not an awful lot happened. Uh, the general here just rallied off uh, one casualty off the uh, Russian dragoons. Artillery stayed exactly as it was. Um, in the center, the Prussian um, Musketeer Battalion here did an initiative charge into the French there. Um, I was debating putting the landwehr into line, but actually, I think I'm going to leave them in column for the time being. Um, this battalion of landwehr moved across to provide support to that attack. Um, the might as well do the defensive fire from the French column as it comes in. So um, it's only one dice. It's going to be hitting on three. Rolls a three. That's a hit. Um, any losses? No, saved. So no effect. Over in. So on the other wing, um, what happened? The uh, Russian Jaegers that were shaken and disordered did a voluntary withdrawal, pulled out of the gap there, um, and. The battalion that was sitting here on the hill, there we go, uh, chose to um, roll to attack. Now, I decided even though it was in initiative move of those Wurstenberger lines, given the fact that the Jaegers had to pull away first, um, I actually diced for it. And initially they failed, um, but they did a re-roll, uh, CNC re-roll, because Kuzov's over this way and um, succeeded and therefore charged it home against the uh, Württemberger line. The um, Opelcheny uh, battalion, which uh, has been sort of out of action since term one, um, has now moved forward in support of that battalion. So we need to do some defensive fire for the Württembergers. They get three shots because they're in line and they are also um, good um, sharpshooters. Uh, they get uh, so they're hitting on threes yeah closing fires threes get the re-roll uh, so they got three hits including a disorder on the uh, on the Russians three hits they've got to save they're gonna be saving on uh, threes they save one of them so they take two losses and they're disordered going in that could be interesting uh so what else happened over here the uh oh then basically the commander the commander was trying to rally off a casualty of this uh, battalion but failed um so that is all the russian prussian turn uh we'll move on to sh other shooting nothing over this uh left side nothing in the center because it's all ongoing melees 
Um, the cannons, uh, the <laughs> Russian heavy battery here, well, it's actually, they're actually medium battery, but um, they'll continue to fire down the lane. Only going to get uh, two of the three cannons, I think, because, yeah, it's just not enough room. However, they are in... Um, that's the range, I, mean, I think I did them out of it last time. So 20 inches at the moment. So they should have uh, four dice firing because they're... Um, uh, it's in medium range and it's a large battery. But I'm only going to give... Uh, yeah, I'm just going to do two dice because I think I wouldn't allow them to have the, the extra gun because it's just all in the way there. So they're firing down the lane, um, it is effective range, which is a four, um, obscured target, fives to hit. They hit and disorder again. Um, the French do not save it. So that French column there is disordered and also takes a, um, takes a casualty. Over here, the land weir can't really do anything. I don't think they can fire because they're in support of the melee, so I think we'll ignore that. Um, the battery, what's become a grand battery. Um, I think they're both all going to fire at the um, French horse guns at the back there. So the Prussian battery is well within range. That's two dice. Um, but they are obscured and also uh, in skirmish, so it's going to be fives to hit. It's one hit. Can the cannon save? No, it can't. And the light battery here will fire as well. Oh, it disorders and hits one. And it's not saved either. So I'm pretty sure that shakes that French cannon. So I think they only have t two casualties. And disordered actually, because we threw a six, didn't we? Okay, and now on to the melees. Uh, we'll continue, we'll start this melee here because it's a fresh melee. Uh, you've got the Prussians uh, who are uh, fresh, completely fresh, um, against the shaken French battalion. So Prussians get six dice. They are hitting on a three. Let's move that out so you can actually see it. the roll. Uh, they hit with five, which is a pretty good roll. Save and roll for the French. Uh, they would be a f uh, four, but they're in a column which pushes them up to a three. Um, so they only suffer one loss there. So one, one down on the French side. That will push them over their shake test, but... Uh, Pushes them, sorry, over their um, stamina. They fight back, uh, they get six dice, uh, but they're only hitting on fives because they're shaken. Uh, two hits in return. And the Prussians save him roll. They save one, <laughs> so that wasn't so good. One play, one v one on the result. Um, so let's see support wise they've both got two supports so that's evens honors even so it's a straight up draw um the french however started the combat shaken and they also have uh, one excess yeah one excess i've rolled a seven for them so that's minus they're not disordered are they so they're just shaken so that's only one off uh, so it goes down to a six. Uh, unit retires one full move to the rear without changing formation at all times, avoiding contact with the enemy. Once it's moved, it becomes disordered if not already. It could have been a lot worse. And the French got plenty of fresh battalions there, so end up back here. Goes back to just the three casualties but it is shaken and disordered. Now, I don't think... Okay, because the enemy retired, this battalion can continue. Um, so I think it will do. 
So it's going to continue into melee against that battalion there because they're only going to get charged themselves next go so they might as well get the advantage first round they've only got the one loss so far so i think they'll do that and i think we do that immediately pretty sure we do so this time the prussians well same as last time the prussians are hitting on a three. Oh, uh there's no defensive fire because of the it's a pursuit Prussians roll uh, four hits. Defensive for the French. Oh my goodness. Two ones and a two. <laughs> so they only save one. So they suffer three losses straight off the bat. That's not nice. Not nice at all. Fresh battalion has just been absolutely mowed down. Uh, so their return though, uh, they are hitting on fours because there's nothing wrong with them at the moment. Uh, they get three, which is exactly 50-50, which is odds. The Prussians descent, defensive, they save one of those, so they lose two casualties. So now, up to the top of both of that is that both battalions are shaken because they're both on three losses. Um, in terms of the, the result of the combat, the French suffered two to one. No, three to one, sorry. So they lose by, the, so they're one down at the moment. However, they got a flank support and they've got another support for the artillery. So that gives them plus one in total. Uh, the, Rus the Prussians, however, these are in range and these are in range, so they're at plus. So basically the upshot is the French lose the combat by one. Um, they're still going to have to take a shake test because, well, they lost the combat by one, but it's a straight up shake test, nothing else. But they've rolled a four, so that has gone. That battalion has been wiped from the board. So the uh, Prussians don't need to do anything because they are... Um, so the Prussians can't do anything because they are now shaken. They don't need to do a test because um, they won the combat. Um, so, but it has cost them. I mean, if you look at that, the Prussian land, uh, Prussian uh, regular battalions. They've uh, both of those have been well. One's been routed and the other's been shaken. They've only got the land where left, but they have taken down two French um, line battalions. So interesting all right onwards to the next combat that's this one here which actually the russians were winning um they won last round but they only get two dice because they're in a built-up area and they missed with both <laughs> there we go well, i thought for a minute it was going to be game over and a russian prussian win but uh that may have changed it uh the Württemberg is fighting back they are shaken however um, they are hitting on fives. Nice roll, four hits. Wow. Four hits. Uh, the Russians... Def oh. Now, what are the odds of that? Four ones. Four ones, that is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> if I hadn't rolled that myself, I would have not believed it. So the Russians end up losing four to zero. Um... And it's four casualties as well. So they can't win that combat. Even though the Württembergers have got... Uh, have they got any support? They've got one support. So it's plus one. So yeah, there's nothing the Russians can do about that. They've lost and they're on f plus... Well, their, their, their stamina is four. Uh, they're actually on six stamina. So they're two over. Um, so we'll see what they do. I rolled an eight, an eight. Um, so that goes down to a six, which is retire one move to the rear. But I think, I need to check this, but I think if you're in built up areas, you don't need to. Ah, uh, but I think they're gonna anyway, because just thinking about it logically, the French can't occupy that building because they're shaken. So, in the greater scheme of things we're better to withdraw while we still can 
and bring up a fresh, fresh battalion. Let's move Kurtz off out of the way. So this battalion falls back through his friends, which he's able to do, and is back to four casualties and is shaken and disordered. So the building is empty because the uh, Wurttembergers can't follow up because, as I say, they're shaken. They did win the melee, but uh, so be it. Now over here, um, we've got the fresh Prussian, well, was a fresh Russian battalion going in against those Wurttembergers, um, but they are disordered and they took two wounds doing so. So um, <clears throat> let's start with the uh, Russians. They get uh, six dice. Um, oh, I should have rolled a re-roll on the... Uh, Ah, oh, never mind. Um, the Russians get four dice. Um, sorry, six dice. They're hitting on a three, but up to a four because they were disordered by the volley coming in. They get three hits. Saving for the Württembergers. It's just straight up saves here because they're not in column. Uh, they do pretty well. They only suffer one loss. Oh, I should have done a reroll. Just think about it. Because the uh, uh, Russians are tough fighters. But uh, they don't do anything with a reroll. The Wurttembergers fight back with six dice, uh, needing a four. Uh, they get three as well, so that's odds. And the Russians defensively, they save all three. Wow. So they suffer nothing. So the upshot of the combat is the Württembergers lose by one. They've got no supports, whereas the Russians have got two supports. So it's just a straight dice for the Württembergs, um, needing, well, as high as they can get, really, but at no minus. They roll a seven. A seven is um, carry on, basically. If, inf if the unit's infantry, hold its ground. <clears throat> so we continue the fight does mean the Russians have won that previous round, so the advantage is with them for next round. So, that was that. I'm kind of not sure how I feel. I think at the moment, definitely the Russians and Prussians have the advantage, but not by much. So, um, we're on to the French turn. Okay, so a pretty quick turn for the French. Well, I'll say that. Um, we'll come to the major decision they had to make. So. The Württemberg uh, command was quite easy to do because they only really got the two battalions plus the cavalry left. Cavalry just sitting there waiting for the inevitable over there for the uh, Russian heavy dragoons to start forward again. Um, so all we did was move the general to this battalion here and take off a skirt, take off a casualty, which means it's no longer shaken which means it's back in order. Now the decision was really what to do with the battalion that was sitting here. Remember we got the Prussian one here, a disordered battalion here and a um, rather uh, shaken battalion back here. Um, so the choice was do you charge into those Prussians um, or do you not? And I think in the end the objective of the scenario is to take and hold this built up area. So Rather than charging the Shaken, I've pushed the French Fresh Battalion into the built-up area. Um, can get there ahead of the ahead of the Russians and the Prussians, and we'll just hope that the French artillery here can put a, a an extra casualty on this because it's already shaken and might actually cause it to run away. That's the theory. Uh, also, the battalion or the brigade commander moved to this battalion took a casualty off and therefore it is no longer shaken uh, and that's pretty much it for the French team you can see the cavalry sitting out over there their gun can't really do anything because uh, the general's uh, busy elsewhere so um, oh we could actually no hang on we could because that's a horse gun isn't it um, yeah roll for that so basically the, the commander-in-chief of the cavalry has moved over there taken one of the one of the shock, and also um, that's no longer shaken. Right, well, we might as well start over there. So the guns will fire at the uh, Prussian, Russian, uh, Prussian, and Russian guns over there. Probably fire at the horse guns because they're the closest target. Uh, we are disordered, and also they are deployed, so hitting on sixes. Uh, no hit, missed entirely. 
uh, the cannons here. We're going to put some canisters straight into this battalion here. Means four dice. Um, we'll be hitting on I think that is in close range, so um, hitting on threes. Ow, that's four hits, including two disorders. Four hits on the column. Um, it loses two, I think, for being hit by co um, uh, hitting being hit by artillery at short range. So infantry uh, hit by. Artillery at short range is minus two on their saving roll, so it would be four. Goes to a six. I managed to roll two, so they saved two. Uh, but sadly for the Prussian uh, battalion, that's two over its shake, and also a disorder. Um, the disordered column here might as well fire. It's only one dice. Uh, they'll get cover, and so it's going to be sixes to hit. Nothing there. So we might as well roll for the Prussian battalion. <coughs> it's two over, and it's disordered, so it's minus three. Uh, five. Uh, they have gone, so the plan worked for the French. Not so well for the Prussians. So another battalion bites the dust. So it's a bloody affair here. Um, this battalion here is probably just far one shot over there. Um, it's effective range, but there is cover and they are disordered, so nothing from that um, then we might as well fire two shots out from this column or it's now a, a, um, a unit in the built-up area onto those Prussians outside be hitting on or the Russians here outside be hitting on threes rolls a six and a three so that's two hits and a disorder saves one loses one it does mean those Russians can't charge in next go because they're disordered. Um, now this has got three firing dice, so it might as well fire the other dice out that way. Uh, we'll be hitting on fives because of cover. Misses. Um, and that is that. So that's the good news. The, the French have taken back control of the built-up area. Uh, they also have um, disordered the Russian column that was about to take it. They've also beaten off that Prussian attack, largely. So, but this is where it could all go a little bit tits. So we've got the Württemberger line here um, against the disordered Russian column. The Württembergers will hit on six dice. They lost last round, so they're hitting on fours. They got four hits, which is pretty good. One more than the odds. The uh, Prussians, uh, sorry, the Russians are uh, Saving on four in column three, but uh, yeah, threes. They save the lot, so no casualties. That's what's saving them at the moment. Uh, they fight back with six dice. They would be hitting on three, but they're disordered, so they're hitting on far, uh, fours. Uh, they only get three hits, but they do get one reroll because they're a tough fighter, so it ends up with four hits. The Württembergers uh, saving on fours. Ooh, they lose three. So the end result of that combat is a three nothing win to the uh, Russians. They're supported, so it's four nil. Um, yeah. So the Württembergers are taking a test. They are um, shaken as well. Oh my goodness. So they are two over the shake. And they rolled pretty good though. Rolled a nine. Um, a nine down two is them a seven. And I think that means they continue to fight. Yep, hold the ground. So they stay, they stay stubbornly in there. We'll take away the extra casualties because they only keep the three. Russians have got nothing, so that's fine. Um, and that is the end of the uh, French turn. Hmm. That's made it interesting. We'll be back with the Russians. All right, on with the uh, Russian-Prussian turn. So fairly simple. Um, the heavy cavalry move forward and are staying just behind the hill because they don't want to get hit by the gun. 
Um, the general moved back and has rallied off a casualty on the Cossacks, so they are no longer shaken. In fact, they can lose the disorder as well. Um, in the middle there, so uh, the Prussian brigade is down to just two battalions of landwehr. Um, and I thought, well, what do I do? They, they really want to try and get the cavalry in and swing around the flank. And that battery is right in the way. So uh, they've decided to charge, we'll see whether it was sensible, charge the uh, French horse guns who are already disordered. Um, so we'll see what happens there. And then the other battalion shook itself out into line um, while it waits for its Russian colleagues to come to its assistance. Talking about the Russians, uh, we did a voluntary withdrawal with the um, Russian battalion that was here and disordered, just pulled back um, to basically allow the guns to come in. So finally the guns might get to fire at the built-up area, see if they can do anything. And this battalion, they, the commander uh, rallied off one shock, uh, which means they're no longer shaken. So we'll move on to shooting. So these are uh, just normal um, light, uh, normal artillery, medium battery. Um, they're under a foot though, so I think that is probably close range for them. No, it's only normal range, so effective range. However, it is a large gun battery. Um, so no, it's just two dice, but it does count as a large battery. Uh, so let's have a shooting effect. No, doesn't seem to make any difference at all. So it's just hitting on fours. That seems strange. All right, double one <laughs> after all that. So no effect. Uh, I don't think they can fire because they're stuck behind the buildings. Um, we've got the uh, Prussian line battalion. Uh, which will fire on that column. It's within six, so they'll get three dice. Hitting on threes, but this cover, which is fours. Uh, one six, so it disorders the uh, the Frenchies, but they do save, which is uh, a bit of a bummer if they want to support the uh, French in the middle there. Um, and then we'll move on to the guns here now um i think the french the the prussian and russian batteries are going to have to fire at uh, i suppose this prussian could fire at that french column at the back there you can see it and it's actually only 24 which is uh still two dice so it might as well have a shot really um so i'll be hitting on fives one hit they do save it however so no effect uh, yeah no effect and the horse guns will have to fire at the artillery I don't think they can fire the shot would go through the um, artillery to hit the column behind so I think it's gonna be one dice hitting on a five uh, they fail so no effect um, over here, the land we're being charged, the cannons will fire at them as they come in. They get three dice. Uh, closing fire would make it a three, but they're disordered, which makes it a four. Uh, they get two hits. One is saved, one is not, and the Prussians are disordered. So that's going to be an interesting fight. So the Prussians charge... Well, might as well do the hand-to-hand -hand now, since we're here. Uh, the Prussians will be six dice, six dice um, hitting on a three up to a four. Uh, they get four hits. The guns, saving roll, I think it's only a five. They only save one, so three go through. The Russian, uh, the French artillery only fight. I think we're just two dice. I think that's right. Let me just double check. Yeah, it's just two dice. They will be hitting on fours and they get nothing. So uh, the Pr Prussian infantry run one by three. Um, the guns are saving roll, uh, doing rail check at minus 
well they're two over their sh over their shake um so they're at yeah minus two on the dice oh and they're disordered as well so that's minus three ah they rolled a three <laughs> that has gone now i need to check what, check what happens to the uh, general because he was with that unit um so i'm not quite sure what happens to that so that but that i know the gun has definitely gone We'll have to check that up in a minute. Now, uh, the Prussians could continue and hit that gun over there. They can't really charge the cavalry. Um, although they are disordered. Let me come back. Okay, uh, so because this general had joined that battery to rally off a casualty and they were destroyed in the hand-to-hand, -hand, he's killed. So the French lose their commander. Um, no, the Prussians can't sweeping advance because they were disordered. If they hadn't been, they could have carried on. Um, yeah, so that's the end of that. So that's interesting. It means the, Russia, the Prussians have no, uh, the French have no longer got a cavalry commander. So they can only move with the CNC, who's over there in the center. All right, um, over here on the Ooh, very messy wing over here the melee that's been going on for a, quite a time in the woods there on the edge of the woods uh, Russians still have the advantage, but they are still disordered because they haven't had a chance to rally yet. So they got six dice um, They are going to be hitting on a four because they won the last round and But they are disordered uh, They get a reroll because the Tough Fighters gives them three hits. Three hits on the Württembergers. They save... Oh, they do alright. They save two, so they only lose they only one over. They fight back with their six dice. However, they are shaken, so they're hitting on fives. Uh, only the one hit. Can the Russians save it? Yes, they can. So, one nil to the uh, Russians in that combat. Um, the uh, Württembergers are one over their shake test. Oh, hang on, it's 1-0. Now, nobody's supported. Build, built up areas can't support, and that other battalion's too far around. So, the, yeah, it's definitely a 1-0 loss to the... 1-0 uh, win by the Russians. In fact, 2-0 because they've got the support of the Opel Cheney there. So uh, the Urtenbergers are doing a test at minus two. And they rolled a five. So they have gone. They've broken. And that will be the end of their wing. Okay. All right, that's the end of the Russian-Prussian turn. I'm not I'm really not sure how, how this is going to play out. So the Württemberg command is now down to just one battalion. Um, which is stuck behind the building, but it is intact. It's only on two wounds. Um, the Russians over here, that column in front is disordered, so they've got a turn where nothing could happen, but the, but the Opel Cheney are still in action. Over here in the middle here, it's a bit of a mess. You've got a disordered uh, column, which will be disordered next turn as well. You've got another disordered column here. Now that can come off because it didn't do anything this go. So it's no longer disordered, so it's on three losses, but it's still there. The, the light infantry Jaegers are shaken um, because they have never had a chance to rally off yet. The batteries move forward, but done absolutely diddly squat. In the built up area, you've got a fresh French battalion, which has taken zero losses, uh, which is good. Um, and out here on the wings, it's got a little bit more messy, so the uh, Landwehr have pulled into line and um, disordered that French column that's in front of them. However, there's another French column at the back there that could potentially come into play because um, it's having casualties ra rallied off. But over here on the wing, it looks like it's all over for the French cavalry. They've lost their guns, uh, they lost their general. Um, yeah, not looking so hot. And the Russian heavy cavalry are starting to move forward so we'll be back uh, with the French turn right as the casualties uh, start to mount the turns take quicker and quicker to do um, so the Württemberg 
uh, line battalion that was sitting behind here did an initiative charge into that disordered Russian column. Uh, it's a risky charge, they've got two losses, the Russians have got two losses, but I just thought it's inevitable eventually they're going to get charged by the Russians, um, and at least they're the ones charging for now. Um, nothing happened in the middle here. Uh, the I did think about putting that French column into line, but it's disordered so it's not allowed to. Uh, the French column at the back here, the general just took another casualty off, so now it's down to just one casualty. So. This French uh, brigade is actually, apart from the one it lost, is pretty much ready to rock and roll. Um, in the middle, sorry, on the wing here, sorry, the French uh, chasseurs uh, did an initiative charge on the landwehr. However, they managed to form square. So we used the rule in the uh, Clash of, uh, whatever it is, the 1812 book, where the uh, charged infantry have to do a command roll. Um, which they successfully did and formed square so that's probably not going to go anywhere so we'll do some shooting um, well there's not really any shooting to be fair we've just got the uh, pr uh, Russian column here that can fire at the incoming um, Württembergers uh, only one dice and they are disordered but it is closing fire so it's forced to hit they hit the French save it however oh sorry the Württembergers save it um, over here the guys in the built up area they can fire two shots at the column at the back here I think no I'll tell you what they're going to do they're going to fire one shot at that and two shots out at the land where so one shot at the column will be hitting on fours missed and two shots against the land where will be hitting on uh, well we're within short range but we have got cover, so it's going to be fours. Nothing. Rolled a four combined. Um, here, the column might as well fire one shot at the uh, the uh, Württemberg. Sorry, against the landwehr uh, would be a three, but they're disordered. They hit landwehr. Do not save. That's one casualty on the landwehr and the cannons will probably fire at them effective range two shots will be hitting on a five because they are in cover it's two fives and two wounds so all of a sudden that landwehr battalion is shaken hmm probably not the best news in the world uh, the cavalry, where they've been charged, well, where they're charging, sorry, the Vertum, uh, sorry, the um, Landwehr Square will fire. Um, it's going to be hitting on threes up to four because they're disordered. Gets, uh, is it one hit or two hits? I think a square only fires one shot, so it's a hit. And it isn't saved, so the... Uh, the French cavalry take one wound as they come in, but are not disordered. So we might as well start with that, see what happens. The French get six dice, they're charging, so they're hitting on uh, threes. Not the best roll, four hits, four hits. Um, the saving roll for the uh, infantry would be four. So they save two, so it's two wounds on the uh, on the land where, which means they're shaken. They fight back with their six. And actually, I don't know that's true. Let me start this again. I don't think they charge home, do they? Okay, so uh, just checked up on the rules. So basically, uh, cavalry can't charge a square unless it's shaken or disordered. Now that column was disordered by the charge uh, from from the previous charge so um, the cavalry can attempt to charge so their uh, two losses do count uh, however the square only fights back with two dice um, hitting on a five uh, which gets one cavalry save of three that's a failure so they take a loss so the upshot of the combat is the French cavalry win the combat by one, 
but a square gets plus three. So even though it's shaken, it gets plus three on its morale check, on its uh, combat resolution. So it ends up it wins. So the French column, a French cavalry, have to do a chart, have to do a reaction to being held. It's a flat dice roll, which they rolled a seven. If a unit is cavalry, the unit retires a one full move to the rear. Okay, and I think that means because they've got no general, they retire off the table. And the landwehr have seen the cavalry off. At some cost, it has to be said, they're shaken, disordered, right in front of a French gun battery. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. They did what they needed to do. And then the next combat is over here. We have the Württembergers against the uh, Russian column. Württembergers get their six dice. Uh, they're charging, so they're hitting on a three. Uh, not so good. Three hits. Three, sa three saves for the Prussian uh, for the Russians. Uh, they save. Uh, they will be saving on four, but they get plus one because they're in column. So they save two of them, so they only lose one. They fight back with their six dice. They are tough fighters as well. So they got three. The extra dot roll re-roll gives them four hits. The Wurttembergers are also in column. <laughs> They're not up for it today at all. That's four losses. Four losses. So they are uh, they're already on two, so that's six. They're three over their stamina. Um, however, they rolled a, a nine. That only makes it a six. It retires one full move without changing direction, becomes disordered. So that's actually not a bad result in the end, but they are shaken. Uh, the, Prussian, uh, the Russians can't uh, follow up because A, they didn't charge, and B, they're disordered. Um, so that is the end of the uh, French turn. They're looking a little bit hemmed in. The Russians can get their act together. I think they'll get the building. But they've taken a lot of losses trying to do it. So let's see where we go. So it's looking an increasingly forlorn hope for the French, I think. Um, you never know, could still turn. Um, the most dramatic thing that happened was the Russian heavy dragoons that were on this hill um, got three moves and moved all the way around and smashed into the French uh, guns. Um, it's not so much killing the guns that's going to be important, but they're probably going to, have, if they do it without any serious loss, they're going to have a converted charge onto that uh, French battalion at the back there, and that doesn't hold bode well for it. Um, the, um, what happened? The, I've just realised, no, no, that's fine. Um, the uh, Russian horse guns moved forward, limbered up and moved up, so they're limbered over there. The Russian Cossacks have started to come forward as well. Uh, in the centre right, the Prussians, or what's left of them, uh, the battery limbered up and moved around to there didn't have enough moves to unload unlimber as, as well and the uh, Prussian general uh, moved and removed one of the uh, fatigue off this landwehr unit so it's no longer shaken um, I might as well take the disorder off that one because it's not going anywhere this go over in the center um, not so much activity as such but the uh, Russians are ready to sort of really pounce hard so they took another uh, casualty off this battalion so it's now only on two um, the other battalion at the back here obviously can't go anywhere because it's disordered so that'll come off at the end of this turn and the Opel Cheney have moved round uh, actually I should leave that on for the minute because they may want to fire actually they can't fire because it's out of the angle so they can't fire okay so i'll take that off the upper chain have just moved around um the flank so uh bear in mind those uh um Wurttembergers aren't there i need to take them away so all the french have got the battalion which is still fresh in the built-up area 
that disordered one there and that other one there uh, which yeah not sure how that's going to work let's do some shooting first um, Prussian land wear moved up they're within six inches so it's a three to hit uh, they're not disordered or shaken anymore so that is a four because the French get cover oh, two sixes and a three for the French to save they save one of those but they are still disordered they already were disordered so they're disordered again there we go um, that's the land we're done over here the guns see if they can actually do anything this turn so it's two shots um, yeah two shots a five is a hit uh, the guys in the building anything but a one yeah they saved um, the battalion here might as well fire needs a five nope and I think that's pretty much all the shooting that's going to happen so we'll move on to the melee um, actually I just realized that that uh, um, just realized that Württemberger battalion wasn't destroyed it was just it was just pushed back and shaken so they might as well fire one shot because if I can get one casualty on this it would have to do a break test a five will be a hit um, they will need to save it a four will save it so they're okay for the moment okay back to what we were about to do the cavalry charging <laughs> into the flank of a battery battery can't respond in any way uh, the Russian dragoons get eight dice two four six eight dice they're charging needing threes uh, they only missed with one so seven hits on the on the French gun it saves two of them so it's five hits on the gun gun fights back with two but I think it loses one because it's been hit in the flank or is it just minus one for being hit in the flank yeah just minus one so it would be fighting on a four goes to a five gets one hit but it's saved by the Russians so it's lost by five so it's uh, disordered, uh, shaken and three over so minus three on the test rolls a it still rolls a um, a good eight uh, which is down to a five <coughs> however artillery breaks and is deemed destroyed um, and pretty much any result at all it gets so they are absolutely mullered and the Rus Russian Dragoons will continue into this French battalion here now they can't respond and I believe we fight the melee straight away so the uh, heavy Dragoons are still getting eight dice and they are hitting on a three not so good this time they missed with two uh, the French column Is hit is saving on a three did pretty well actually only suffered two losses the French fighting back they get two four six they would be hitting on a five. Oh, they're disordered as well uh, sorry they would be hitting on four they're disordered and makes it a three and they're also hitting the, uh, sorry would make it a, other way around it would be a four to hit They've been hit in the flank, which makes it a five to hit, and their disordered makes it sixes. Got one. Which is not saved. So the Russians take one casualty. Uh, the French, however, took two. So the French lose by two. Lose by one, sorry. Um, they are on three casualties, which also makes them shaken. So they're doing a test, only at average test. Uh, oh, they're at minus one because they're disordered. <sighs> Rolled a five. Um, that is a four, and they have been wiped from the table as well. Oh my goodness. 
and the general was with them as well so he goes because he'd been taking off shock so ish charge of the heavy cavalry has been devastating so the French are down to one shaken Württemberger battalion one um, and yeah one disordered French battalion and one intact French battalion we'll play their turn and see whether they can do anything so I think I'm going to call it there um, just thinking about it logically the French have only got three battalions left um, the Württembergers have successfully rallied off but look at the situation they've got they've got two Russian battalions to one side of them and they've got their Russian heavy dragoons coming around the back of them um, also this battalion here likewise could be either hit by the cavalry uh, or by the land wear up there so while the building itself hasn't fallen it's only a matter of time the Russians have got uh, two more battalions to throw forward um, and I, I think realistically the French would probably uh, start to retire from the table right now they've really got nothing left but it was a pretty bloody affair um, if we've been playing proper uh, black powder brigade commands everything would have gone I think <laughs> I think the only thing left well, yeah, I don't know what what was left to be fair the Prussians are down to just their two landwehr battalions actually one of those is shaken as well um, but they have still got the battery the Russian heavy cavalry well they would have gone as well because uh, the brigade uh, very early on went uh, shaken largely shaken the French heavy cavalry or French cavalry went very very quickly as well um, the only one that sort of stuck around with any uh, any durability was the French command and also the uh, Russian command uh, Russian stoicism and that kept coming forward um, but they were getting taking some losses I think every battalion had taken two or three casualties um, and the only really untouched battalion in the whole game is the one in the current in the building here um, but I think um, it's inevitable all the all the Russians need to do really is just roll their artillery forward and um, get into close range and just continually fire at that building um, and then eventually hit it with everything it's got I think the cavalry heavy cavalry getting their act together and coming swinging around the flank taking out that support battalion and now in a position to take out two, two more battalions is it's kind of uh, uh, the final infamy for the uh, for the French so um, yeah I'm gonna call it there I think we'll call it a, a, a narrow Russian Prussian victory um, but good fun all the same and I hope you enjoyed it if you did please give it a like share subscribe do all that good funky stuff and um, I will see you again soon this is Dom signing out